I'm Priscilla Barrera with the Investing News Network, and here with me today is Sam Jaffe, Managing Director of Carn Era. Sam, thank you so much for joining us again. Thank you. All right, so we are almost at the end of 2019. To start, can you let our audience know what have been some of the most significant developments in the lithium-ion battery space, and did anything surprise you? Yeah, I think there's been a number of developments, some of which have been pretty uh, pessimistic in terms of the, the market. I think the electric vehicle sales in China have dramatically dropped. That's part of kind of a whole secular trend within China. The automotive industry has just kind of cratered in China because of the recession issues there. But I think, you know, we're seeing a, uh, we're, our forecasts are, pretty, are being pulled back a bit in China near term because of the drop in electric vehicle sales. All right. And last year when we spoke here at this event, you were forecasting the lithium ion battery globally will double. The market will double by 2020. Are we still on track to meet that? And if not, what factors maybe like, as you were mentioning before, have impacted your new forecast? I think for 2020, we're still on track for that. The, the factories have already been built. They've been turning out batteries, and it's essentially supplying demand that we already knew was there for 2020. It gets past that to 2021, 20, up to 2023, where we're starting to pull back our forecasts. All right. And um, in terms of actual forecasts, what are you, some numbers maybe for our audience to understand better where the market is going 2020? Yeah, so 2020, we're at about we're going to be at about two, a little over 200 gigawatt hours of batteries cons produced and consumed, all of which being lithium ion. Um, I think our 2030 number is right now it's at about 1.6 terawatt hours or 1600 gigawatt hours, and that number is going to come down a bit because just because of some of these trends that we're seeing developing today. All right. And in terms of new technologies being developed in the lithium-ion battery space, what did you see in 2019 and what do you expect to see next year? I think you're still seeing silicon coming into the anode. That is increasing. Uh, we're seeing higher levels of silicon and more batteries with silicon in the anode, but still in the low percentage, single percentage points. Um, and I think that that's, that's probably the most important technology trend that's different. But the other thing that we're seeing is just the improvement of the batteries, of just traditional lithium-ion batteries. We see more and more uh, announcements, press releases, uh, basic R&D uh, news around just making them more durable, cheaper, just you know, slight incremental changes that add up over the years. All right, and let's stay with the anode side for a second. I know last year we, you were very optimistic about the role of graphite in batteries. Are you still as positive? Yeah, graphite isn't changing. It's it's all, I mean, you could, if you talk about a lithium-ion battery from a volumetric basis, it should be called a graphite battery, not a lithium battery. All right, and um, in terms of this synthetic and versus natural, um, what is your stand? Will there be room for both? Uh, what are you seeing? There's definitely room for both synthetic and natural. It's going to be blended, and they're, they're both going to be used. I, it's hard to tell exactly what that proportion will be, but they're both going to be major players. All right, and on the cathode side, uh, we're still seeing a lot of agreement from analysts saying we're moving to these high nickel cathodes. Um, have you seen any improvements in those cathodes this year, or what are the challenges that remain? We're starting to see the first NMC 811 batteries come off production lines. Um, they're still very early stages. They're nowhere near at the purity and performance levels that you're going to need to see for those to go into cars. But, you know, in China, we've seen some 811 coming out. It needs to go from multicrystalline to monocrystalline, which is actually a big uh, kind of uh, uh, in processing problem that still has yet to be solved. So we still don't see 811 coming in until 2023 in big numbers, but at least we're seeing some being produced. All right. So we talk a lot about new technologies, uh, high nickel cathodes, but are there any missing trends that investors that are watching us might be missing? Something that we should be talking more about uh, in this space? Um, the other thing that, that concerns me about future demand is lithium pricing, which in a weird way is a bad thing. You'd think that a cost input getting cheaper would, would improve battery demand, but actually the, the problem is 
at low pricing and consistently low pricing, it's hard to get the capital flows to go into the new mining and resource uh, infrastructure. And, th and we're just not seeing that. And we're seeing that, that a lot of that needs to happen to meet 2023 20, and beyond demand. And it's, you know, we're, we're many billions of dollars short in terms of the capital that's needed for the resources that are going into the batteries. All right, and uh, my final question for you today, what do you think is the biggest challenge for the lithium ion battery space and energy storage as we enter the 2020 decade? I think, again, capital flows into the base resources is the single biggest challenge for the lithium ion space. I mean, the demand will come if the batteries are made and they're cheap enough and they're good enough, which I think the industry has lined up. But if there's not enough lithium, if there's not enough cobalt, et cetera, that's a problem. All right, Sam, thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely, thank you. All right, once again, I'm Priscilla Barrera with the Investing News Network. And here with me today is Sam Jaffe, Managing Director of Current Era.